Hi there guys, my name is Emma Tates and I am the Children's Ministry Director at our Edina campus and I'm so excited to be here with you today for Edina students to talk about our series of Awkward. And so I need to ask you this, I need to like, I need us to be real for a minute. Can you think of a time where you did something like really awkward? Like I'm talking really awkward. Maybe it was last year, maybe it was last month, maybe it was just yesterday, but I think at some point in our lives, we've all experienced a really awkward moment. I remember a time where I felt really awkward and it was when I was in the fifth grade. In fifth grade, I had a boyfriend. My boyfriend's name was Evan Zek. And what will make this even more awkward is that if he goes on the internet and finds this one day, so I really hope that he doesn't because that would make this really, really way more awkward than it needs to be. So we were boyfriend and girlfriend, yes. However, did we ever talk in person? No. Did we ever hang out one-on-one? -on -one? Only twice. But we only hung out at school events outside those two times. So we hardly ever hung out. We really ever never really talked. We only communicated via email. And so I remember in December of 2005, there was a craft fair at Wingate Elementary School in Grand Junction, Colorado. Evan was there and I was there as well. We kind of walked around together a little bit here and there looking at the different crafts that people were selling, whether that was things like towels or cards or just different things like jewelry. Um, and I would say it was pretty romantic. But um, so I, we actually separated for a minute and when we came back together, I saw that Evan had a card in his hand and he reached out to give it to me and had my name on it. And as I reached my arm out to grab it from him, I felt just liquid coming from my armpits. And so I immediately put my arm back and I ran to the bathroom because I realized in that moment that I was a nervous sweater. So I lifted my arms up in the bathroom and my entire armpit was soaking wet. Talk about awkward. So awkward is just such a cringy word, isn't it? No one likes to feel awkward, right? We don't enjoy finding ourselves in those awkward, cringy, uncomfortable, embarrassing moments. We also know that those moments are actually a part of life, right? We've all experienced an awkward moment at a time or two. All of a sudden you're in middle school and your parents start asking you some kind of awkward, maybe a little too personal of questions. Teachers are telling you to stop talking to your crush in front of the entire class. Talk about awkward. And then you show up to church with your friends and you find out that we're talking about some awkward things as well. So you can't really ever get out of it, right? Talking about this kind of stuff at church can definitely be awkward. And honestly, it's just too important of a topic to ignore. That's why today, no matter how awkward it might get, we're going to continue a conversation that we've been having about why these things matter, not just to us, but also to God. And to speaking of things that matter a lot, when I was your guys' age, what mattered to me the most was my Nintendo DS. If you even know what a Nintendo DS is, points for you. But that thing meant the world to me because all my friends had one, so we would play together. My sister had one, so we would play in our different rooms at nighttime when we were going to bed. I even had a virtual dog that I took care of on my Nintendo DS. I really, really valued my Nintendo DS. And we all value different things, right? I think that one thing that's true for all of us when it comes to value is that we tend to value things because of what they give back to us. And maybe it's a new pair of shoes that keeps us looking cool, or maybe it's being on a certain sports team because you know that that's gonna be the one that you will do your best on. Or having certain friends because you wouldn't wanna be friends with anyone else. So those aren't the only reasons that we value those things, but they certainly don't hurt, right? But when those things stop giving us what we want, what happens then? Well, just kind of like that, we stop giving them the same value. We begin to treat them less with less value than we originally did in the beginning. So remember that prized possession that I had, my Nintendo DS? However, now being 24 years old, I unfortunately do not play my Nintendo DS anymore, let alone I don't even know where it might be. I don't spend a lot of time playing video games unless it's when I play Nintendo Switch and just get absolutely wrecked by Tony Richter playing Smash Brothers or Mario Kart, right? This Nintendo DS does not hold the same value to me that it once did. 
So think about it. Think about something that mattered a lot to you when you were in elementary school. That thing that you're thinking of probably mattered to you a ton back then, but now that you're in middle school or in high school, it just doesn't bring the same value to your life anymore. Now, when this stuff happens, it's not really that big of a deal, right? Like my Nintendo DS, it's probably in a drawer somewhere. It's not really a big deal, right? But when you stop caring about your old stuffed animals, your baseball collection, or that jacket that you loved so much when you were a kid, that's just a part of growing up. There's another side of this whole value thing that I'm gonna have us talk about today, and that's on the human side of things. Sometimes without even realizing it, we treat the people in our lives the exact same way. When they can do something for us or give something back to us, we consider them valuable or important. But when they don't, that's when we begin to treat them as if they've lost their value or they've lost their importance. And that's when we start treating them the way and less than they actually deserve. We start saying things about them or treating them as though they are not special or they're not important in any way, shape, or form. Now, I know that we may not all be doing this, but some of us might be doing it without even realizing it. But it's important to talk about this because it's a really big deal. Because when it comes to like having crushes on someone, some of you might not even actually be interested in dating right now, or maybe you're not even allowed to date yet. Still, I want you to stick with me and I want you to really pay attention because you are going to learn something today and we're all gonna take something away from this talk because this is not important just for today, but the day dating might be important to you, this will be important and this will be really valuable information. So the way that we treat people we're interested in or spending time with matters. The way we treat people we're interested in, maybe in a crush way, maybe you wanna date them, or just spending time with really matters. The way we value them with our words, our actions, or even our thoughts is super important. We may be tempted to talk about people um, in ways that really aren't that valuing to them. We may say things like the way that they look or about their personalities that aren't that respectful. Or we might even think about them in ways that don't value them. There's kinds of thoughts that we, um, we, want, we don't ever want them or anyone to know about that we're thinking about these people with. We might treat the person we're attracted to in a way that makes us feel good, but it might be hurtful or harmful to them or to someone else. We flirt with them, we might tease them, we talk to them in a way with our friends. It may seem cool at times, but when you do that, it doesn't really benefit anyone besides ourselves. So no matter what happens, the truth is this. When we don't treat people, when we don't treat others like they have value, we wind up treating them like objects instead of people. Objects that might mean a lot to us when we first caught feelings or started talking. Objects that now don't seem to have the same value to us unless they're doing or saying the things that we want them to do. Instead of seeing someone as who they are on the inside first, we might be seeing them in a way that's not super honoring to them. We may even forget the fact that they have their own thoughts, they have their own desires and feelings and emotions and hearts. And maybe we don't even seem to care or notice in those moments. So here's what's important though, is that every one of us wants to be valued. Every single one of us wants to be valued. Whether you wanna acknowledge that or not, it's true. I guess that deep down, all of us want to be seen as someone worthy of respect, worthy of someone else's time, someone who is valued for who they are, not for what they can give or be to someone else. But if this is what we want for ourselves, isn't it what we should do for others as well? How do we start changing the way we treat people so that we're not only giving them value, but receiving value for ourselves as well? So I think it's really important that we'll take a few minutes to make sure that so we know what God has to say about all of this. First, we should know that God made each and every one of us. Uh, and because of that, we have value and we are valuable. We have value simply because we are made by God. And beyond that, other people have value because they were created by God as well. So that right there is the foundation for the way that we should be treating and valuing other people, but also ourselves as well. If we believe that we all have value simply because God made us and told us that we have value, that's super great. That's the starting place. But even Jesus did not stop there. 
See, believing those two ideas is important, but uh, the way that we treat other people because of these ideas are true are even more important. Thankfully, Jesus gave us a very clear picture of how people should treat other people like they have value, and that's what we're going to look at today. So about 2,000 years ago, Jesus was having a conversation with some really smart people. Think like scholars in our time, right? These were religious leaders and lawyers that had started to really dislike Jesus. See, they thought that they were in charge of the ancient Jewish people. These people were supposed to listen to them. They were supposed to follow their rules and obey God's law, his laws exactly the way that they did. But then Jesus came along and started teaching in ways that really followed the laws that God had given to the people. And so Jesus obeyed all of God's, law, God's laws, and he did so in a way that was full of love. And these religious leaders, they didn't like it very much. They would often confront Jesus and try to get him to say something or do something that they knew would go against God's God to prove that he just wasn't listening or that he didn't care about what they were thinking about, right? So in the encounter that we're going to look at today, a group of religious leaders had approached Jesus to debate a question, try to catch Jesus saying the wrong thing. Finally, one of them spoke up and basically said, okay, Jesus, here, what's the most important, what's the number one commandment that God has for all of us? What's the most important thing to God out of everything, out of all these rules? And to answer, Jesus said something that they didn't quite expect. Something that I think can help change the way that we treat everyone. And it's found in the book of Mark. So it says this, And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. The second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. No other commandment is greater than these. And that's from Mark 12, verses 30 and 31. So Jesus gave such an incredible answer here, didn't he? And to answer he gave, the answer he gave, I think, was because he wanted it to be clear to these people that what mattered most to God was to love him with all that we are and to treat other people with the way that we want to be treated as well. See, when Jesus used the word neighbor, he wasn't talking about like your literal like next door neighbor or like the person who sits next to you in class, but he was saying like every other person around us. He shares, we share this planet with like 8 billion people and God wants us to know that he cares deeply for every single one of those people, including you. In other words, God cares about the way that we value other people. If we want to follow God's greatest command, we have to start with value, not just for ourselves, but for others as well. And this applies to our desires to be with someone in relationship with them, the crushes that we have on people and more. We have to start care, caring about and practicing integrity. Integrity is choosing to respond to the things we think, the things we feel, and our desires in a way that respect ourselves, respect others, and respect God. So we have to choose to love and respect ourselves first. Maybe that's, that looks like saying no when we're asked to do something that we don't feel comfortable with or deciding not to watch that movie or not look at that picture that we know is inappropriate. Whatever it looks like for each one of us, we have to start treating ourselves with the value that God says that we have, right? And then we can do the same for others. You have to start with yourself first, but then you do the same for others. We can stop using language that doesn't respect other people. We can stop talking about them in a way that doesn't value them when they're not around, even when they're in the room with you. We can treat other people with value because we know that it's important to God. And if we want to honor him or treat him with respect that he deserves, we should live like this matters. Because how you treat others in yourself matters to God. So what does it look like? Right? Like, this is great. This is awesome information. Like, thumbs up from me. But what does this practically look like in my day-to-day -day lives? So what does it look like when you're back at school? What does it look like when you're with friends, when you're running around at practice? Or maybe you're even just alone with the person that you have a crush on or you're in a relationship with. When we're tempted to make jokes or participate in behaviors or treat someone with a, in a certain way just to get what we want in return, well, the next time that we may find ourselves in that position, we can ask ourselves a couple of questions. The first is, what would it look like for me to treat this person in a way that honors 
God? What would that look like? Maybe instead of joking around with them about what they look like or what their personality, you should be the person that speaks up to stop those conversations from happening. Or instead of allowing your mind to wander in directions that aren't honoring of another person, you should remember that God made that person to be loved and valued. Or instead of flirting with someone just to make yourself feel good, you should take the time to think about what that, the other people is actually feeling and actually thinking and making sure that their thoughts and feelings really matter to you. Whatever that might be, don't go another day, don't go another week or a month without working to treat other people in ways that matter to God. So then the second question is this, do I believe that I have value to God, that I, that others have value to God and myself? So now for some of us, before we can really treat others like they have value, we have to first believe that we deserve to be treated well ourselves. See, if you don't respect yourself, you don't respect your own body, it's gonna be really hard to do that to other people or to know what that means to be like, to feel value or receive value from other people. So if you aren't sure and how to say yes to that question, do I believe that I value to God, others, and myself? We really wanna have that conversation with you and talk about what that looks like. I wanna challenge you to tell someone that, that you're not sure if you can say yes to this question. Tell your small group leader, a parent, or another trusted leader that you need some help discovering some of your own God-given value. This might be the most important step that you need to take to living a life where you know that you have value and you can treat others like they have value too. So now let me close by speaking to you who may be struggling with this today. You may feel like you don't have value because of the way that others treat you. Maybe you're even struggling just to value yourself because of those things that have happened. If that's you, please know this, is that you have value. And what happened to you, what's currently maybe happening to you, does not take that value away. Your small group leader would be a great person to have a conversation with about this thing this week. Colin would love to talk to you about this. I would love to talk to you about this. We love you, we value you, and we wanna help you find the help that you need. So remember, how you treat others, how you treat yourself matters to God. How you treat others, how you treat yourself matters to God. When we learn to love, value, and respect ourselves, we'll do the same for others. And your small group is a great place where you can chat, with, chat through this more with them. And same with Colin and myself, we'd love to talk through this more with you. So before I leave, I want you to think about one last question and that's what's one way that you can show someone that you value them? What's one thing that you can do today, tomorrow, this week to show someone that you value them? So with that, let's pray to end our time together. Dear God, thank you so much for today. Thank you so much for this time that we get to spend together. I just pray for everyone who is listening to this that they know, God, that because you created them, they have value. You value them, and so therefore, since we have that value, we can value others, we can care for others, we can respect others, God. So I just pray that this week, this month, this year, we can work toward valuing others and caring for them in the way that you care for us. Thank you so much for this night. Thank you so much for this week, for this opportunity to talk about some awkward things in church, God, but the things that are so important to talk about. It's your name that we pray. Amen.